Spire. Welcome back to the Kidney Stone Diet Podcast, the show about reducing your risk for kidney stones and living your best life. I'm your host and fellow student, Jeff Saris. And as always, I am here with Jill Harris. Hi, Jeff. How are you doing? Good. So, yeah, so we have had a we had a busy day today. With, yeah. We had a bunch of calls earlier. We're knocking out a bunch of podcast episodes. So we're on the, the last one that we're recording for today. Trying and to help the people, man. For sure. <laughs> today we are going all in on sodium. So sodium. sodium is a big part of the kidney stone diet. And how does sodium affect kidney stones? Well, there's a few different things. And I'm there's a lot of science. Always, always know that even though I'm bringing it to you in a, in a very uh, down-home kind of way, all the things I speak of are drenched in science. And uh, it, you can go to my mentor's website, Dr. Fred Coe. That's a C-O-E, his last name, Dr. Coe. And if you just Google Coe and kidney stones, you'll find his uh, website. He gives all kinds of free information, too, and all of the science. You'll find me there, too. I've written articles for him because people have a hard time understanding him because he's so <laughs> sciencey. So you'll find both of us, uh, the yin and the yang. Uh, on kidney stone prevention on his website. Okay, so salt. First of all, no matter what kind of life you're living, we should we should pay attention to how much salt we eat every day. Is it necessarily salt or just the crappy foods that salt is in, right? So typically if you're eating high sugar, high salt, you're you're not eating fruits and vegetables because that is not found in fruits and vegetables. So the reason we care about high salt and kidney stone disease is Again, put in my terms, when we eat too much sodium, it actually leaches or pulls calcium out of your bone. Your bone, it's robbing calcium from your bone. And then it winds up extra in your urine. And if you have extra calcium floating around in your urine, other minerals and crystals can form to form with calcium in your kidney, phosphate. And oxalate, and you can form calcium oxalate or phosphate stones. So the main thing, it's twofold. Too much sodium pulls calcium from your bone. Many of my stone formers also have osteoporosis. So it's very, very important that you make sure you get your sodium down to where it needs to be. And unless the doctor has told you otherwise, that would be between 1,500 milligrams and 2,000 a day. Even the American Heart Association has lowered sodium for patients. They want it to be around 1,500 milligrams a day. As always, I will tell you, less doesn't mean better. So when you get goals from from your doctor, don't try to be the type A. Perhaps those goals, if you went too much more, like in the case of spinach and oxalate, they said it's healthy, I'm going to have even more, more health. No, you got a stone. Or they said 1,500 milligrams of sodium, so now I'm going to 800. Don't do that. Stick around your goals. Always know, too, when a health professional uh, is giving you goals, we don't expect you to get them every day. And I think that's why diets, uh, people fail. I don't think people fail at diets. I think the system fails. So you got to make sure your system is one that's working for you, and different systems will work for different people. But to get back to what I just said, It's very important that you all realize we do not expect you to be perfect. And when you are expect, when you expect yourself to be perfect and you're not a few days in a row, that's when everyone derails and you say to yourself, well, I I can't do this. This is ridiculous. I I can't do this every day. Look, Christmas is going to come. Hanukkah comes. Birthdays come. Obstacles come. You're not going to be perfect every day. So you're going to have a salty day. I don't care about that. So what? You had a salty day. It's not the point. The point is you didn't form a stone because you had one salty day. You formed a stone because you had a lot of crappy eating days, months, years. It took to form stones in many cases, not all because there's people in the background. I form them quicker than that. I know, I know, I know. Majority of patients, though, people always want to correct me. I get it. The majority of patients, it took them a long time. You don't have a spinach salad and form a stone. You don't need a salty day and have a stone. So what we expect you to do with your goals is more days than not, meet them, okay? When you don't meet your goal, and I will repeatedly say this, so what? 
Get the next meal choice, snack choice. The next time you're looking to put something in your mouth, make it a healthy one. Get right back on track. So sodium is very important, not only for losing calcium from your bone, but also it lowers urine volume. What does that mean, Jill? It means you're going to pee less. We all know that when we have a salty meal, we start bloating up. So we're not going to pee as much because we got sodium in us. And so sodium, uh, fluids follow sodium. Okay. So some people will say, well, I'll just, I'll just drink extra so that sodium just floats on out of me. It won't. The kidneys are always trying to maintain fluid balance in your body. So if you did have a really salty meal and you drank tons and the kidneys just hurried up and got all that sodium out of your body, the kidneys are super smart, man. So they're always going to want to maintain balance. So they're not going to just release all that extra sodium you ate. They're going to slowly release it so they so you don't dehydrate real quickly and you know your fluid balance gets all messed up. So it doesn't work that way. So you can drink extra water because it may make you feel a little bit better, but don't be thinking all that sodium is going to be rushing out of your body with those glasses of water. It won't. It will take a few days. That's why you see weight gain the next day and maybe for a couple of days because the kidneys will slowly release the sodium and fluids together so you, you don't flush yourself out of important electrolytes, okay? Um, so sodium is important. It's difficult to change if you're a crunchy kind of gal. I am a crunchy gal. Most of those things have a lot of sodium in it. So you've got to be careful. Look at your labels. And we will have a whole podcast on just on a nutrition label. It's very important. So that's what sodium does in the diet for kidney and, stone formers. Yep. And you mentioned fluids then. Approximately how much should someone be drinking or how much uh, fluid should they be um urinating out in a day. Are there numbers for that? Yeah. So we would like a stone former to pee out two and a half liters of fluids a day. How much does that, how much do I have to take in, Jill, to get that much out? Well, everyone will be different. If you sweat a lot, if you eat a saltier diet, if you eat a high sugar diet, all this will change your uh how much output you put out. But generically speaking, if you drink two and a half to three liters of fluids a day, water is best, all fluids count, but water is best, uh, you should be peeing out about two and a half liters. So you'd have to drink two and a half to three liters a day. But again, watching your sugar and sodium each day is going to be very helpful to make sure that you are actually peeing that fluid out and not retaining it. Also, if you, if you work out a lot, you may sweat more. If you are, you know, if you're having hot flashes as a woman, you may sweat more. There's a lot of other things that go into consideration. So it's not just what you take in is what exactly comes out. So again, there's always more to this than one thinks and what one sees on the internet, right? Yeah, definitely. And we've talked about the extremes when it comes to a diet too, where um, you mentioned not going under, way under on sodium intake and things. Um, the kidney stone diet itself lives in that middle ground. It's not yeah. the all or nothing approach to to health and wellness. Like what's sort of just the broad strokes? We, we talked about a lot on here, but um, sort of the broad strokes of the kidney stone diet. Mm -hmm. uh, the kidney stone diet is this. There's an article on my website at kidneystonediet.com. There's also just one handout that will you can print it out and just post it on your fridge so or put it on your phone so you uh, on the background so you can always have it. The goals are this for kidney stone formers, but for anybody. I would give this to anybody who comes to me for weight loss. Here's a really good, healthy diet, people. Here it is. We want you to pee out two and a half to three liters of water a day. Two and a half liters is the minimum. 1,500 milligrams of sodium a day. 1,000 milligrams of calcium a day for men and women. Postmenopausal women, 1,200 milligrams of calcium a day. Not over that, that. Uh, protein, there's a calculation on this handout. There's also an article. Uh, meat protein, there are limits to it. We don't want you overeating meat protein. It could lead to stone disease, in many cases does. Oxalate, 100 uh, milligrams a day, unless your doctor has told you otherwise. And sugar, 25 grams of added sugar for women, 38 grams of added sugar for men. Added means it was added into the product. Banana don't got added sugar. Banana, God put it in there. 
okay? So uh, added sugar is different than naturally occurring sugar. And those are the goals. And you can find those at kidneystonediet.com under the free resource page. A whole bunch of stuff there. Yeah. And um, at the site too, you have the course, you have a bunch of other free resources and email list and everything where people can dive deeper and, and really yeah. get the, yeah, get into the nitty gritty of all this and really reduce their risk for kidney stones. The reason, the reason that you're here, the reason you do what you do. So thanks again, Jill. I think this is another good episode. We'll wrap it there. And Thank you. Um, if you're enjoying this podcast, be sure to subscribe wherever you're listening or check out the YouTube version at Kidney Stone Diet. And yeah, tell your friends. I mean, anyone who needs needs a help, we want to reach as many people as you possibly can here. So thanks again, Jill. And thanks, we'll talk Jeff. again soon. Okay. Bye-bye. See ya.